And so we move into the last phase of the hero's journey and our last few weeks together on this course, but not, I'm sure, our last few weeks together forever. And we're really moving into what is the end of the story, end of all story, the end. Um, and unlike the beginning part where you are plotting, where you are devising, where you're trying to structure what happens and how the reader's take, taken down this course, this road of trials, the end is a little bit of a different place. It's the glide home. The hero has already been in the ordeal, this huge standoff whichever that may be and however you have constructed it. Um, and they are on their way back. But of course, of course, we don't want to make the road easy for them. And we do still need some plot points at this point of story. So this is where they're going, oh, it's okay. I've survived. I'm going to get there. Let's go home. And what we really need at this point of story is that moment. And it's called the resurrection in which it is the most dangerous meeting of all. It can be the villain coming back, that sudden surge, you know, you can remember that in action movies or action books, that he's defeated, he's on the ground, he's bleeding and dying, the hero walks away with the elixir, with the prize, and suddenly, out of nowhere, the villain returns with a a bludgeon or a stick or something and hits them over the head so we're looking at that symbolically if it's an action movie that can be that a book rather a movie book whatever it may be you know in a crime it can be the fact that they thought they arrested the villain and then he gets away but on another level this point in story is also about something bigger and it is a place in which your hero sometimes has to make a sacrifice. We love the word sacrifice in stories. We really do. Because we're really working here with the symbology of a hero. And a hero doesn't become a hero without losing a lot. So we're looking here at loss. And we're asking ourselves, what does he, she, they have to lose right now to come home? In a novel, you're going to construct this. In a memoir, you have to find this. That time in which you have to give up something bigger. So in a literal level, it can be giving up the villain. You know, letting him, and I always remember that scene from Point Break, the original one with Keanu Reeves, in which the um, antagonist, um, played by Patrick Swayze, they finally catch him on a beach in Hawaii or somewhere. Or, and, and Keanu Reeves, as the FBI officer, makes the choice to let him get away, to swim out and have the honor of his own death. Okay, so that's the kind of moment in which we're looking for in your story, we're looking for an all story. We're looking for a, a decision or a moment in which a deeper moral choice is made. And... In a memoir, this is a pivotal point because we followed you on the journey. We've seen what's gone on, but we want to slow down here. We want somebody potentially to challenge you. You know, maybe it's a coming home. Maybe it is a, a um, reconciliation. Maybe it is a moment of forgiveness in which you go to your father or whoever it is, the abuser, the whatever, the trial you're attending, and you are there to say your piece. And potentially what the hero does at that moment is they realize that forgiveness is more powerful than justice. So we're looking for that beat and story as we move to the very end, because what we're going back towards is we're moving beyond this and we're moving to a place in which we just wrap up the story. So we want to hit that little point and then we just get to the end and the end really is just lovely, I like to say. It's the easiest part. It's the, just the tying up. Um, often in a story, you just want to tie up your plot lines. You don't want to re leave your reader hanging. Did this or that one die? Did this one get married? What happened to this relationship? So really just on a very logical level, some of the characters you've mentioned, some of the plot lines or through lines, you want to just make sure the reader's not left hanging. Um, and this can be quite quick 
perfectly done. Now, often in a memoir, I like to have what's called an afterword. So we finish with a feeling and then you can tie the plot lines up a little bit later. But however you choose to tie up the plot lines of the story and the logical things that need to be completed, an ending is more than that. And I always say that an ending is an emotion. You're honoring yourself and you're honoring the reader. Because if somebody gets to the end of the book, they've journeyed a long time with you. They've started with you, broken, confused, damaged, or searching. They've walked the search with you or your hero. They've gone on that road. They've been in that cave. They've journeyed into the dark night of the soul. They felt your pain. They felt the sorrow. They felt the desperation that all books need to have. And then we've come through. And all we want is just a feeling of closure. So in a romance, it is always happily ever after. Very seldom do we want an unhappy ending in any book, any book apart from a tragedy. Um, please don't blindside your reader. Please don't kill anybody off at the end, unless it's a crime novel and he actually kills the villain. Please do not kill off your hero at the end, unless that has been set up from the beginning, that this is a tragedy, that this is, uh, I don't know, your, your readers are going to be outraged. Okay, not done, not cool not um, accepted. Um, equally, we just don't want to feel a little bit let down. So happily ever after means a summing up a deep feeling of, oh, this is worth the journey. Powerfully, when you get into your second draft of a book or a short story, you're going to start winding your, your symbology to a close at the end of the book. Beautiful to bring in metaphor in story. Um, and maybe that's in your second draft or third draft. But instead of just talking about facts and, 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 and plot points, maybe you start to wind in, you know, a wind or the weather and how the weather, uh, you know, in the beginning started closing in. And at the end, you go back to that. So if you look at books that really carry a, a literary feel to them, it's not just the writing that needs to be poetic or elevated often it's the imagery I'm not talking about adjectives I'm talking about can you link your story to a bigger mythology can you link your story to a, a bigger feeling or metaphor or system in the world but at the end of the day we just want to close out the story with you and feel that it's been worthwhile and then the final note as we move just to this end and this closure is I want to remind you that all books are a promise. All stories are a promise. When we pick up that book in the bookstore, when we look at the picture that's designed on the cover, when we read those words, when we flip it over and we look at the back, there's a promise made by you as the author. We touched on this earlier. It's either I'm going to tug on your heartstrings. It's either I'm going to take you into deep, dark place with me of abuse or pain or illness and recovery or it's going to go I'm going to take you on a wild ride of addiction and you're going to have a huge amount of fun or it's I'm going to make you think and solve this crime or it's simply I'm going to let you lie on the beach and imagine that you are in a glamorous world with a Saudi prince and a beautiful woman and I'm going to draw you into that so we all books are a promise and in the end the only question is, is have you fulfilled that promise? Have you delivered that story? So as you sit here in these next two weeks and you start to work about how will my book end? I'm going to push you to write your end scene because in writing that scene, it is seeing the full journey. It doesn't matter where you are in your writing. Just write it. Let that feeling come out. Play with that emotion. Um. So we also call it in kind of more serious plotting, the ending payoff. So the payoff just means the promise. We followed you. You want to know if it's been a good deal. And that's what gets you Amazon reviews. Um, and of course, remember that if we followed a romance for 280 pages, we want them to be together. Um, we want you to win as hero. We don't want the hero to lose unless 
that sacrifice is a conscious loss. It's a deliberate letting go of. It's an allowing. It's a surrender. Um, and those are books that we feel and they tug on our heartstrings. And so take some time this week, please. Work on how the closure will come in your book and how your reader will feel at the end of the journey. <laughs>